you guys must be really looking forward to summer. I, it looks like the winter's been incredibly tough. Uh, we've got the lingering effects of Omicron. How good is this summer going to be? Well, Guy, great to be with you. And, uh, you know, it's, um, it's just been a roller coaster. But if you look at the fourth quarter results, we had a very solid profit, better than what uh, people thought we were going to have. Uh, it was sort of in between the Delta surge and the Omicron surge, at least for us. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, bookings canceled for January and February, but March bookings look good. Uh, we're, we're predicting that we'll be profitable in March, fingers crossed, and then uh, profitable for every quarter after that. But a lot of it just depends on the unknown, which is uh, will there be another surge and how bad will the surge be? Uh, Omicron hit us really hard for uh, a little over a week uh, in December in terms of our own operation. Uh, but, uh, you know, since uh, early uh, January, operations have been really, really smooth. So, so that's where it starts. We have to have our people uh, healthy and they have to be running a good operation so we can serve our customers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just following a similar pattern and um, th it's, we're in, we're receding in terms of the COVID cases uh, and we're seeing the bookings come back. So actually, I'm very optimistic, you know, we're going to have a profitable year. Well, Gary, you need the people healthy. You also just need the people, period. And you have had to pay more to get people in the door now, $17 an hour as you try to attract new employees. What can you tell us about how long those higher cost pressures are going to last? I think it'll level off, but I don't think that uh, we're going to see wage rates go back. Uh, I, I, that you know, hi history says that they move up, they'll stabilize, and I think that that's where we are. But we'll just have to see. Uh, there's a lot of people that are still out of the workforce. Uh, we have been successful hiring, so we did he meet our hiring goal uh, for 2021, uh, and we've got uh, ambitious plans here for 2022. But our folks are very confident that we can execute, and um, that's, that's the environment we live in. I think that that's the root of a lot of the inflationary pressures that we're, we're feeling as a, as a country and as a world, and it's certainly impacting uh, you know, the cost structure at Southwest here. But the main thing we want to do in terms of managing our own inflation is get back to our pre-pandemic productivity yep. in terms of asset utilization and employee productivity. Uh, and we, uh, you know, we've got a good line of sight to that over the next couple of years. Gary, as you had all those troubles over the holidays with so many people out, uh, with boards being lit up, with cancelled signs, did you reconsider at any point your attitude towards vaccine mandates? Do you, have you in any way changed your attitude towards them post that period? No, Guy, and, and again, our, our um, situation was we had, a, we had a very solid Thanksgiving, a very solid December and Christmas uh, travel period where it really hit us was uh, in early January. But in terms of the vaccine uh, mandate, uh, no, I'm I, uh, very steadfast in believing that people should be vaccinated, but that shouldn't be up to me. So... Um, you know, I had COVID myself, as you all probably well know, and I was uh, vac vaccinated, I was boosted, and uh, you know, still got it. So I, I think that the, the value of the vaccine, at least with Omicron, obviously, is that it was a very mild case, and that everyone that I know that's been vaccinated, and I know a lot of people have had Omic the Omicron uh, variant, have, have had very mild cases. So it's not gonna prevent the spread, uh, if you get it, you have to isolate. So all those issues we're still dealing with, uh, whether you're vaccinated or not, but at least it keeps you out of the hospital uh, and, uh, and, and hopefully with a mm -hmm. you know, very, very mild case. But even if the case is mild, Gary, there's still a quarantine period recommended by the CDC, which is what created so many issues with the labor force right. and the airline sector in general. Should we see yes. another wave, God forbid, how do you then adjust to avoid the kind of cancellations and disruption to airline travel we saw playing out over the months of December and early January? You know, it, it, uh, it really speaks to my point about getting back to our uh, uh, pre-pandemic efficiency. Right now, to, to address your concern, the only thing you can do is have people in reserve. And, and that's just a euphemism for being overstaffed. And... Um, We've got to have a stable operation. We've, we've got to have great customer service. So we'll, we'll do whatever it takes to do that. And right now, it's costly. Um, and that's about the only thing that you can do. 
Because as, as we were discussing earlier, just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean you won't get uh, one of these variants and have to isolate for a while. So hopefully we'll see this move into the endemic stage. And, um, you know, we don't require people to isolate when they have the flu or when they have a cold. And we'll get to that point uh, with COVID. Uh, we're just not there yet. Gary, how are you feeling about oil at circa 90 bucks a barrel? Do you feel you have any pricing power to be able to pass some of that on? How are you going to deal with it? You know, our, our uh, average fares were very solid in the fourth quarter, and that is with business travel still down 50 percent. Uh, so we've got a lot of consumer demand. Uh, people want to travel. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, at least for, for now with our current cost structure, uh, we're, we were profitable. We're in a position where we can pass through uh, these cost increases. Um, we're hedged, and we're also continuing to modernize our fleet. The 737-8, which we're continuing to take delivery of, is 15, 14, 15 percent more fuel efficient. Uh, so we have things that help mitigate or manage uh, that fuel cost pressure. But um, you know, we use a number of experts to try to keep us educated, and we have forecast for fuel for oil prices all over the map. Hmm. <laughs> so uh, we'll do our best to manage that. But yeah. uh, at least where we are right now, we're not that far off uh, from where our prices were in 2019. So we'll be okay at these levels. Gary, you mentioned business travel is still down 50%. What is your expectation on when we will see that come back in a more meaningful way? Well, we talk to uh, our big corporate accounts uh, frequently, uh, and, and Bob Jordan, our incoming CEO, just, just talked to uh, a large gathering uh, uh, last week or the week before, and um, we hear what you all hear. People are anxious to get back to normal. They're anxious to uh, get back to having events, seeing clients, uh, going to visit suppliers, employee locations, whatever it might be. So there's definitely pent-up demand for that. Uh, I would hope that by the end of this year, we're within 80 to 90 percent of where we were pre-pandemic. It's a guess on my part, but just based on talking to people and seeing the progression uh, quarter by quarter uh, of business travel, I think that's a reasonable assumption right now. But uh, uh, you know, January, February are going to be light months, and it's too bad because normally uh, they're, they're strong business travel months. They, they won't be this year. Uh, hopefully post-President's uh, Day weekend, we'll begin to see that uh, uh, come back to life a little bit and, and hopefully continue to improve every quarter. The good thing we have that's unique to Southwest is we've just opened up access to the big corporate accounts by joining the global distribution systems, as you all know, uh, in 2020. So we'll see some share shift benefit at Southwest because of that. Uh, we got a lot of boots on the ground to uh, win a lot of corporate accounts, and we have a great yep. product to offer. Robin Hayes, uh, my good friend uh, over at JetBlue, saying within the last hour he sees business traffic returning starting Q2, but starting in Q2. Gary, are you seeing any effect from the rollout of 5G? How do you think that process is going to work its way through? How did we end up with such a mess? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how we ended up with, some, with such a mess. One has to assume that uh, people just weren't working together. Uh, but uh, when the FAA... Uh, issues an airworthiness directive, which they did uh, in uh, November, saying that we cannot land in low visibility uh, situations if there's a 5G tower at that airport. There, there's nothing the airline can do uh, other than cancel or, or uh, the flight or divert. So it, it is a huge issue that um, has taken uh, the Secretary of Transportation's uh, uh, attention uh, to get involved, as well as uh, the White House, uh, quite frankly, uh, to uh, get past this impasse. So mm. the short answer to your question is because 5G hasn't been deployed at some of the towers at airports that we serve uh, within a three-mile uh, radius, uh, we've had nil uh, in terms of an impact uh, because it wasn't turned on. So um, uh, that, that's not a permanent solution. So we need to continue to work with the aircraft manufacturers, uh, with the uh, radio altimeter uh, suppliers, 
uh, with the telecoms, with the FCC, with the FAA, all of those folks need to continue yeah. to work. We, you know, we're, we're, we just fly the airplane. You know, we don't make the things. We mm -hmm. don't, we, we don't uh, you know, deploy uh, 5G. So all that has to take place amongst a number of parties. And uh, eventually, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's, I don't, it's, it, there's certainly a path towards uh, coexistence here. And uh, yeah. what, they've, what they've done around the world is they've used less power. Uh, they've had mm -hmm. different directions with the beam, different proximity of towers, and uh, those things weren't utilized here. So uh, anyway, we'll, we'll get there. Um, how we got here, again, I, I don't know that I have a great answer, but the important <laughs> thing is we recognize there is an issue and we need to solve it.